Welcome to the American Landscape. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. On this episode, we're heading to the Kingsburg Historic Park in Kingsburg, California. Located in California's Central Valley, it's just 89 miles from Bakersfield, 22 miles from Fresno, and 189 miles from Sacramento. Now we're here to see Dave Meyer, the president of the Historic Society in Kingsburg. He's invited us back. We were here a couple years ago to see some other sites, and he's promised us a good time at the Kingsburg Historic Park. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. One country, 50 states, and many roads. It's all about the American road trip. So please join me and together we'll visit roadside attractions, fascinating museums, unique landmarks, and offbeat points of interest. Hi, welcome to the Wrigley Mansion, come on in. Welcome to the Museum of the Forgotten Warrior. But most importantly, we'll experience the inspiring people and grandeur of the American landscape. Hey Dave. Hello, Greg. Welcome to the Kingsburg Historical Park. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for having us back. You know, I've never thought I'd return to a previous location, but here we are again because we are very happy to have you here. Trust this, me. Oh, thank you. This, this, and I don't mean this pejoratively, but this little town's got a lot to see. It does. It does, and it's for, kind of an unknown gem in the valley. It really is. Well, for a place I've blinked by, I can't tell you how many times driving to 99, even when I was in the Air Force, going down to Southern California back. You blink, you move on, and uh, you wouldn't even know you missed it. And now I've been here and can't believe I've missed so much. And if you were lucky, so, you saw the water tower, coffee well, pot water tower, well, remember, when yeah. you went down the freeway. Yeah. But that's about as much as you learned about the town. That's exactly. And sometimes when you're driving, you didn't even see that. Your passenger might have. So, you know, I'm ready to see some heritage of the area. Well, we have a lot of stuff, trust me. And okay. We can keep you entertained for as long as you want. Okay, so we're here at Clay School. This is our first stop. It's kind of the building that you really see as you pull in to the park here, but I do see a church next door. Um, I know we want to get into that nice air conditioning, but can you tell us a little bit about why is this here? I saw people come out of the church. Looks like it's still operating, but it's in the historic park. What, what's the, going the, on here? The church is still operating as a church with the same people that it was moved in about four years ago, hmm. uh, and it was completely refurbished. So they have the right to use it for their Sunday services, and we have the right to use it for weddings or other services that we rent it for as income. Uh, this building, the Clay School, was the first building that was on this site. The Historical Society bought this land. It was a farm, had nothing on it except some of the trees. Uh, and the Clay School was moved here in 1971, I believe it was. It took them about 10 years to put it all together and have it be uh, functional to let people come in and view the artifacts and what was here. And it was all done by volunteer help too, oh. which, which has changed a lot in recent years. We don't have the volunteers to put up buildings and, <laughs> and uh, do all of that kind of work. We just don't have the skills and we don't have the volunteers. Okay, well let's go and see it and see where it all starts. I know there's some rich history of the area here. So are these high school like graduation photos? Greg, these are photographs of virtually everybody that ever graduated from Kingsburg High School dating back to the early 1900s. Wow. We also have them cross-referenced in a binder so somebody could look them up by name That's or amazing. by year of graduation. That's amazing, look at all this. It's interesting to see how not only hairstyles change, but photographic processes. <laughs> you know, we got, you know, we got these oval ones, then we get squares. Uh, I see a bunch of different styles. Just yet. Yes, that, that's uh, abs it is absolutely fascinating to watch the hairstyles. The eyeglass styles also, you will know. Oh, yeah. But look at this, like the, the curls on her, 1925. Yeah. Uh, a very iconic in the 1920s, the swinging, uh, the roaring 20s there. Another thing that, that this, uh, if you're being an astute observer, you will find is that prior to 1942, about almost 20% of the students, and you can tell just by looking at the photographs, 
were of uh, Japanese extraction. I saw the here. I was going to say something about uh, the ethnic diversity. And, and so was there a lot of Japanese there immigrants here? There are a lot, a lot of them. And then, of course, the internment came along. Oh. They were all gone. Oh. So if you look at the picture in 19. 19- 44, there aren't any there. It's completely white. Because I think it because of the Kingsburg and all the, the kind of Swedish iconography, the in the then when I saw that, I'm like, wait, I thought it was Swedish people that you know here, but obviously a lot of Japanese farmers, I guess, came in. The Japanese came in. I, I we had a, a, a an, an exhibition here a couple of years ago that was funded by the National Park Service. It went to 10 cities across the country, and we were by far the smallest. Uh, and uh, doing the research for that, I, I found that at one time uh, before the war, Kingsburg had uh, three Japanese-owned grocery stores. It had a Buddhist temple. It had a Buddhist school. It had a noodle house. Oh, uh, all of these things in a Swedish village, which is absolutely amazing. amazing. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, Japanese were very much mistreated and, and taken out, and many of them did not return after the war. But, oh, that's too bad. Uh, but they've worked, they comprised a large portion of our uh, citizenry prior to World War II. Hmm. So I see a classroom back here, right? So let's go see. This is a schoolhouse, so let's see what uh, is going on back here. So is this a typical classroom? What was, were all grades taught in, in one room here? This is, yes. Yeah, so I had, uh, uh, three classrooms, uh, but because we're using one as an actual setup as a classroom, we have put, you'll notice it's desks, uh, desks are different sizes for the I did little, see the little tiny, tiny guys, guys yeah. all the way up to these. And uh, my, my favorite story is we have a guy here that was actually went to school here way, way, way back. He's in his 80s. And he, uh, he tells me that his initials are carved uh, into one of uh, those. <laughs> and he also tells me that, you know, back in those days, they had ink wells with mm. pens that you dipped in it. Yeah. If the girl in front of you had pigtails, it was really fun to dip their pigtail in ink. Now, imagine what would happen if you did that today. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. And then even maybe into the 40s or 50s, there's a couple metal ones. Yeah, so I think that, that one looks them. pretty much 50s to me. Yeah. I, I, we got film projectors, overheads, a mimeograph machine, you know, a good array of the, the presidents that probably hang on, hang, hung on the wall over the period of time. And then wow. here you have um, pictures of pretty much, I think, all of the students that went to Clay from, from the early days on, on up. That's amazing. You see how many, really look at how thick this is. Thousands of, of pictures. photos. Yeah, thousands of pictures. I don't pictures. think I've ever seen, and I've been in some historic schoolhouses, anybody that's ever collected this much history of every individual. I've never you know. seen anybody that had that much from their local schools. Now, I'm yeah. not saying it doesn't exist. I've just never, never seen, seen it. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, wow. When I was trying to do some research in uh, some of the other communities around, I contacted their school system. They had nothing, no lists. You know, they might have had some old yearbooks mm-hmm. that you could look through, but nothing like this. That, yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So what, uh, what's in the other rooms now? Well, we have a, a miniature military museum, and this, this is the cloakroom for the middle classroom, and that's a mini museum uh, for military. And we have uh, uniforms and other equipment that goes back to World War I. Almost all of it is uh, legitimately Kingsburg veterans stuff. Nice, nice. So it's a very unique collection. It's not extensive, but it is pretty unique. Nice. And then, uh, uh, again, there are more artifacts and... and uh, uh, of band equipment, uh, musical instruments, and uh, office equipment, and many things like that. And those are uh, uh, interspersed through the other two rooms. So I think now we should go outside and get in the heat, look at some of these things, okay? (laughs) Well, let's warm up. All right. So how how big's the park as we're heading over to this this little house? The park is approximately five acres. If I was here and I won the picnic, can I just walk in the park and you can't if the back. gates open. Okay. We, we don't have any rules against that. Right. Yeah. So I see a lot of things I see, like maybe kids want to want to sit in the little horses. There's a gazebo. It's very nice and tranquil out here. It's just, you know, really warm this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's at 1400 Earl Street? What happened with this house? This is another structure that was moved here onto the uh, campus. Uh, it was built in the early 1900s by uh, Peter Olson, I believe, was the builder. Um, And it was 
at one time, I believe it belonged to the uh, Catholic Church and they donated it to us. And it's been completely renovated. It has all period furniture. Um, it, it looks just like it would have in the early 1900s. So this gentleman here, is he? That's Peter Olson, the man that, that uh, built the house. Very distinguished looking gentleman, I was gonna say, wouldn't you say? Yeah, nice picture, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Very I, formal. For a minute, I thought he was a sheriff. He's got some badge he's wearing that's probably yeah. telling us something that we just nice, don't know anymore. A nice wool. Look, it's like a nice wool suit, mm. heavy material. Oh, can you imagine that right now? <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> wow, a family going on in there. Well, there's a, you really dress this place up. I mean, you got a lot going on here. It's, it's like packed full of... Narrow, narrow hallways, like, but then, you know, they yeah. didn't use tons of space. They didn't waste space no, back when they were no. building homes back then. Wow. And this would have been a really upper-class home. I was going to ask you about that, you know, what level, you know, he was a professional or somebody, a mover and shaker in town. This was a, the, a home built by people with means. With means. Yeah, it's not what I would, it's simple by what we would think today, but in the period it seems not so simple. No. Uh, a big iron, cast iron stove, which probably would have lasted a lifetime. Well, here it is. Yeah. Almost all oh, 120 years later, you said around 19. It probably now? works yeah. fine. I, we, yeah. haven't, we haven't tried to use it well, any time recently. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little wash basin room here. Looks like they had some water with a hand pump yeah, coming in and, here. Yeah, and there again, I don't think when the house was first built that it had any indoor plumbing. Uh, they probably added it as, as they could. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you've done a really nice job of representing and restoring the home. It's very nice. Yeah, and of course, in the, in the home as it existed uh, back in the day, uh, they probably would not have had as much stuff as we have. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. because we wanted to show a lot of artifacts that uh, people were not familiar with, and, 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 and we have them. So, you know, everything from there behind you is a fire extinguisher that's made up of chemicals uh, up on the wall there. Uh, I'm told they use carbon tetrachloride in the, in the old days, which is highly poisonous. I say that doesn't sound like a good thing. No, it's no. not, but, but that's what they had. So. And, and I'm guessing this is a rug beater. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or you could swat your kids, kids? with Well, it. yeah, it's got dual purposes, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Johnny. Yeah. This is the medical building. Okay. Uh, we have here a uh, mock pharmacy, mm -hmm. a mock dentist office, and a doctor's office. And what time period are we supposed to be in here? Is it fluid? Well, it's kind of a mix. Uh, mm -hmm. if, I had to, if I had to say, I would, I would say probably uh, 40s uh, period, most of it. I, uh, the dentist mm -hmm. equipment is stuff that I remember from when I went to the dentist, and that would have been back in the, in the 50s. Okay. Uh, so I think probably that's about the right period. And then, is it saying model drug fountain? Is that the? There, there is still a model drug, and this is, is uh, from the same building. Oh, okay. Um, but back when this was a real functioning type of operation, um, it had the Drugstore soda fountain. It, had, it was always you know, combined, right? All of yeah. that stuff. Yeah, you bought your film there. You, you, you just, it's, so it's, your druggist might be giving you a fountain drink and then wrong, filling a prescription and then yeah, getting yeah. you some film. And you had your regulars yeah. that came in for coffee every day. Well, Model Drug now is primarily a, uh, an outfit that services uh, uh, homes, uh, care homes, but it's not it's not the Model Drug that we knew, and we had. Two drugstores in Kingsbury, Ostrom's Pharmacy and Model Drug, both had the soda fountain. Both were local places where people could congregate, get together every day, and chew the fat. I see. And then the dentist is next after that back here. Yeah. Right. Now this uh, gentleman is uh, about <laughs> to operate on this poor kid. You can tell he's pretty petrified. Yeah. As yeah. he probably should be. And uh, yeah, have, that uh, equipment. My wife works for a dentist. Now, I, that equipment scares me. The new stuff is bad enough, but <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that is um, frightening to say the least. And the uh, door back there, Dr. Colander was actually a dentist here in uh, uh, Kingsburg for many years. Mm -hmm. His office was in what was the Bank of America, which is no longer oh, Bank of America okay. because they decided to uh, 
leave Kingsburg. But the building is being restored right now, and it's a beautiful classic building. So I'm really happy about that. Nice, nice. Dr. Larson was there. Were earlier doctors, and we have a picture in there of some of the, uh, uh, of early doctors before him. He was a doctor in Kingsburg for many, many years. Delivered probably 5,000 babies would be my guess, including my son and my my wife. So it tells you the span that we're talking sure. about, right? And over here on this kiosk is a picture of Dr. Larson. Uh, we've got a mannequin that looks a lot like yeah. his picture, so I'm pretty pleased that we were able to get that. So every town needs a fire department. I see you have a volunteer one here, hose company number one. Yes, uh, they had volunteer firefighters for many, many years. Uh, I believe it was up until the 70s. When I moved here in 77, I think it was primarily volunteer fire department. Yeah. And uh, this was, this was built in 1994 as a replica of an early day Kingsburg Fire Department. I okay. have never seen any pictures of it that looked like that, but that was the idea anyway. What about the vehicles that are inside? Are they Kingsburg vehicles or are they, you know, replicas? Yes, they are. Um, the 19, I believe it's 1929, actually left town and somehow found its way back in a really decayed condition. You can see some pictures in there uh, before they restored it. It's beautifully restored. I said from here it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a wonderful job. Now the, the GMC over here obviously is much newer and it clearly has not been restored. But both of them run and often are in our Swedish festival parade. Nice. You can kind of see uh, um, you know, the Disneyland's got a fire truck on Main Street. You could almost take this seat out and say that's the seat for that, that vehicle. You can see it's probably modeled after something very similar because even where the people sit kind of looks like yeah. this. It's just and In fact, that's what they do for the, uh, for the Swedish festival. Uh, the city council would sit in the back, back of this and wave uh, the parade. Well, these are nice vehicles. This is a, a great addition to uh, the historical areas. And then now the old, I guess these that they had to move, the old, move uh, by hand. Yeah. Human powered tank. Yeah. And again, you can imagine that that did not go oh, very far I when it came to a fire. I can almost imagine how heavy this must be. I don't even want to move it, but like, that's got to be pretty, pretty heavy. Yeah, that's um, a uh, two man over there because yeah. you can see it's got handles on yeah. both sides. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Nice. You got some old hats from the, uh, the firemen. That's nice. If you look at the, even some uh, police stuff back here. See, there's, there's, there's a truck. there is yeah. that truck, I believe, and you can see it's in nowhere near the condition that it's in now. Right, right. Wow. <laughs> but it was a working truck. Sure. Yeah, Olson Brothers was an early manufacturer of uh, and inventor. They invented a lot of equipment. Uh, of course, back if you go into the early 20th century. People had to be inventive because you couldn't just call up Sears and get it delivered the yeah, next day. Sure. And uh, they invented a ton of equipment that they made here locally. They did. They invented machines when they needed to. They've got uh, things for all the way from back to wagon wheel uh, shrinkers that shrank the metal rim that oh, went around the okay. wood wheels. Yeah. There's one of those in there. There's uh, just a tremendous amount of equipment in there. Uh, much of it that they made themselves. Got probably a hundred or two hundred uh, horse um, trees, you know, that we yeah. used uh, horses to hitch equipment. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we've got all kinds of uh, the two horse, four horse, uh, single horse. I've thought about hanging them up and it's all over in one place and calling it a tree farm because <laughs> these, are, these are called trees. Sure. So, wow. You know, I have this weird sense of humor. Yeah. Um, these, uh, you, this is something that was manufactured by Olson Brothers. It's a gearbox. Um, you can see they have molds that they used. We have mm -hmm. all of this old stuff that uh, yeah. many of us don't even comprehend how they made stuff back then. Very, that's very true, very true. And what happened to the, uh, the brothers and the company? The, the last Olson Brothers were very instrumental in forming the Kingsburg Historical Society and, 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 and building all of this stuff. They, oh. they were very active and very helpful. Uh, the last of them died off in, in I'm gonna say, uh, maybe seven, eight years ago. Uh, so there's not any of that branch. There are still Olsons around, but not of that branch. Okay. Um, and so, there, and the manufacturing uh, plant, and it is now uh, 
inhabited by London properties who just did a fabulous restoration. I think they must have spent millions of dollars because it was in one of these old brick buildings mm -hmm. with a dirt floor, but massive because they had, this was a big operation. Sure. Uh, and it's been completely restored and it's very, it, it, it's something that we can be really proud of. They have old pictures from the historical uh, that we provided for them. So they display those in this building also. Nice, nice, wow. There's a lot of really original stuff. There's, there's uh, handbooks about um, uh, all sorts of manufacturing processes that, it, that they have in their library there, pricing schedules for all kinds of equipment. It's, it's, it's fascinating to look wow, through and I see. Bet. And even some of their records of what they charge people, there's invoices, and you look at it, you know, and it, there'd be a job and they'd charge five cents for this and 10 cents for that. <laughs> all these old tools, so one of my favorite things here is this, this uh, forge, with all the tools still there mm. that they would have used. It's a massive collection of tools. Wow. Uh, it's got the hand pump where they would pump the air through the uh, element. Bellows. Yeah. 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 And uh, back there's a punch shear. And I think that Olsen Brothers actually made that punch shear. And you well, can see really that. really ornate, the it's, little it's, sign it's, on it and all that. Yeah, it's a massive, massive device. And I'm sure it's very dangerous too. And they made wagons, and you know, we've got a lot of old wagons and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, one other thing about the Olsen brothers yeah. is the, this was a very popular pump. They didn't invent it, it was invented by another local fellow, but they took it over when that fellow died. Oh. And it would be it's a very popular pump, and it would, the lower portion would, would uh, be in the channel that the, where the water was, yeah. and you needed to lift the water up higher. So then it would lift it up, and it would come out on the higher there. Um, and that was that was a very big uh, product that they made here. So it probably uses something. Was it an Archimedes wheel, or is that what it's called? It's like it's like a spinning wheel yeah, plunger type a, thing. It draws the water you can, up. You can see it inside yeah. there. It's it's not not a complex Flexing. piece of equipment, but pretty vital. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can You don't want to have to siphon the water out of a trench, right? Wow. That's, yeah, it's just amazing. You know. So when are you open? We're open on Saturday mornings from 9 until 1. And of course, if we have a group that wants to tour, we will accommodate any time that they need. And then and you mentioned that the church, you can do weddings. So someone could, let's say someone that wanted to find a nice little country place to have a wedding. Kingsburg. Yeah. You, get, you got a church. And I didn't, I think you said you, uh, when we talked earlier, it's a place for like uh, bridesmaids to dress, people to get ready. There's a hall. There's a hall that seats 200 people with a state of the art kitchen. Uh, and uh, we have all kinds of functions. Last night there was a, uh, I believe it was a quinceanara uh, here, but we've had weddings, we've had wedding receptions, we've had memorial services for people who have died. Uh, you name it, we've had all kinds of activities. Right. And do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's www.kingsburghistoricalpark.org. This has been hugely enjoyable and a really Love spending some time here. I'd like to spend more time. There's just so much to do. I wish I could keep you here for it, longer. It'd be another trip. <laughs> Yet again, another reason to stop as I'm traveling on the, the 99 and a, and a real reason that road trippers should stop here and spend some time. There's no reason to skip Kingsburg, skip Selma. You know, yeah, skip absolutely. The, <laughs> come, absolutely. Come to Kingsburg. So, we okay. have wonderful restaurants in town. Yeah. We've got... got a lot of stuff to see, as you've seen at the jail, you've seen our depot. Yeah. Uh, this park is just fabulous. I don't think anybody has ever come to this park and seen everything there is to see in one shot. I don't think yeah. it's hardly possible. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I know we're going to go back downtown to a local Mexican restaurant that was suggested last time we were Los here. Los Pepe's. That's what, Los Pepe's. Yep. And have some food and beverages and relax, <laughs> talk about our day. And again, appreciate your time here, David. Uh, loved, loved it a lot. So. I appreciate your coming Thank to visit us. It's been really great. It's been great. Thanks. The big teapot, a coffee pot, right? Coffee pot. Let's do that again. Wasn't born here. What is it? But I got here as fast as I could. It was cool.
I'm satisfied with that.